I've been asking people for the last few days what they, they want to talk to you and ask you about, and I do want to get on Law and Order, which clearly at the conference you guys have identified as a very important issue for New Zealanders. But I do want, and it's typical mainstream media, you have been getting cracked at all weekend for saying, I followed the Crusaders since I was a kid. Some smart ass yeah. on, on Twitter says, oh, since he was 26, because that's when the Crusaders started. Do you want to clarify <laughs> that statement? Oh, that's ridiculous. I mean, I was born in Christchurch. I've been a Canterbury pre uh, you know, follower and supporter for years, whether they were called Canterbury but when I grew up and, playing Ranfield. And I still, thought that was the natural Crusaders explanation. Crusaders that was the natural like explanation ridiculous. which the Twitter trolls would never let you actually deliver, so I yeah. thought I'd give you that chance. All right, quite I clearly, at, <laughs> quite, quite clearly at the conference, law and order, no matter what the stats are, it is a perceptive truth in New Zealand that many New Zealanders are desperately concerned about a state of lawlessness yeah. in many parts of the country. Ram raids, and look, we've even had discussions here. One of our announcers, Martin Devlin, talked about being in a, a gas station in Hearn Bay, one of the nicest, you know, upmarket places in Auckland, mm. and a guy comes in, just helps himself off the shelves, looks defiantly at the cameras and at the staff and walks out. And that sparked a yep. plethora of calls about people who've been at Pack and Save and people just walking out. Yep. Um, you've... We've lost the plot. <laughs> yeah, look, I have to agree. A and anecdotally, talking to people, talking to dairy owners in this country, something's gone horribly mm. wrong. Mm. Are longer prison sure. sentences the answer to that? Yeah, it's part of the answer. Uh, the first thing I'd say is it's all gone wrong because the government has been soft on crime and set from the very, very top uh, a very permissive attitude that ends up siding with offenders rather than victims. That's the bottom line here. Uh, it's not it's not perceived, it's actually real. We've got a 30% increase in violent crime. We've got a 100% increase in retail crime. We've got 65% growth in gang members. We've got five of our police districts now with more gang members than we've got police officers. And we've got a ram raid happening every 15 hours. And, and my point is very simple, which is, you know, do we just start to accept that that's the new normal in New Zealand and that and every six months things get more gratuitous, there's more violence, uh, and that just becomes the new standard? I mean, just think about the last few weeks. Um, I think Mike Hosken calls it the maorification of New Zealand. There is without doubt a tension and questions being asked about the extent to which the Treaty of Waitangi or its ill-defined principles have been applied across the entire public service to our local bodies, to the way we are governed. The question of co-governance, the question of honouring the treaty, which of course is only binding on the chiefs who signed it and the Crown itself, not the rest of New Zealand or any private business. Do you believe, in general, we have got this out of whack, that there is a maorification well, of New Zealand that needs to be addressed for us to proceed as a democracy? Well, look, I mean, the, the thing is, I think there's three things about this government that have really taken us off track the last three years. One is massive economic management, the other piece of incredible centralisation and control, and the third big area is identity politics. Um, it's tried to pitch groups of New Zealanders against other groups, whether it's farmers versus city folk, landlords versus tenants, employers versus employees, Māori versus non-Māori. Um, our view is really simple on that, is that we just don't support the co-governance of public services. We are one country. We have a single system of public service to, you know, services. They are ava made available to every New Zealander under equal citizenship on the basis of their needs, not their ethnicity, uh, and that we're all uh, equal citizens, equal one person, one vote, um, equal under the law. So, you know, that just means there's no place for that. That's why we've said we'll scrap the Māori health.